Have you ever struggled with figuring out what hairstyle is gonna work best for you? Have you ever asked your stylist a question similar to, if you could do anything, what would you do with my hair? What do you think will look best? I really wanna go short, but I don't think it would look good. Well, don't stress it, because if it has, I'm gonna share five steps that will help you immediately know what the best haircuts for you can be. So, let's do that right now. Okay, before we dive into these steps, I need you to understand something. You need to understand that there isn't just one haircut or one style that will work best for you. I actually hear that a lot in the salon. Clients come in and they say, hey, if you could do anything, what would you do? The answer you're gonna get from any stylist when you ask that question is what mood they're in right now. It isn't the only limiting thing that will look best on you. There are tons of different options. So you have to understand that we don't wanna limit you into thinking that's your best option. That's one option. And it may be a great option for you. But we also can use these next steps that I'm gonna share with you to determine what makes the best sense for you. What functions best for you today may not be the best thing for you in five years or 10 years or even next week. So I want you to understand how to determine what is going to make the most sense for you regardless of what changes. So, step one. Now step one is simply understanding your lifestyle. What does your day-to-day -day look like? Do you have to have your hair back for work or for your hobbies? Can it be down more often? Are you wearing glasses a lot? Do you need to look more professional or less professional? Can you look professional during the work week and then let things calm down a little bit on the weekend? What do your weekends look like? What do you enjoy doing? Are you out in nature a lot? All of these things are gonna help determine what styles are gonna make sense for you. It isn't just important that we come up with something that looks good on you. It's important that we come up with something that looks good on you, but also makes sense with your lifestyle so that you can functionally wear it and enjoy having it. Okay, step number two is about understanding your face shape. Now, I'll help you figure out your face shape. I've got you covered there. We'll talk about that in a little bit. But you need to understand what your face shape is. Knowing what your face shape is is really gonna help you determine what to accentuate or what you don't want to accentuate. And by the way, if you want me to do an entire video on maybe the best cuts for different face shapes, comment below and let me know. Maybe I'll do that video. But nonetheless, understanding what your face shape is is gonna help you determine maybe you want to accentuate fullness in your face. Maybe you want to elongate your face. Maybe bangs are the best option for you. Maybe a certain kind of bangs are a better option for you. Maybe having layers to soften your chin is a good option if you've got a square chin. All of those things are going to help you figure out what works and what is the most flattering for you. Understanding what you like about your face shape. Is there something about your face shape that you want to accentuate? Maybe you love your jawline and you want to actually accentuate it. Maybe you wanna draw emphasis away from something specific. Whatever that is, knowing what your face shape is and knowing what you like about it are going to help us determine what makes the most sense for you. So I've got a few more steps that I wanna share with you, but before we jump into that, I also wanna share something I'm really excited about. If you wanna be a part and join me in a webinar that I'm gonna be hosting soon, I'm gonna share the top things that you need to know about doing hair at home. We're gonna talk about color, we're gonna talk about hair cutting, we're gonna help you go through a process so that you understand how to get the results that you want at home. There's a link in the description of this video, click on that and I will be sure that you get notified as soon as I get that webinar up and running. Okay, tip number three is figure out your comfort zone. Yes, I know this isn't what people wanna hear, but this is the truth. I don't care what you get cut, if you cut your hair short, and you love it at the salon, and you leave, and you're mildly uncomfortable with it being short, and then somebody that you care about, may it be a loved one, a family member, right, or a close friend, just looks at your hair and says, oh, mm, you got your hair cut. Many times, that's all it's gonna take, and you're gonna immediately be very uncomfortable with a haircut that you are now stuck with. So at the end of the day, it's very important that we know where our boundaries are. And there's nothing wrong with that. Understand what is gonna to be too short, what's gonna to be too long. At what point are you gonna feel mildly uncomfortable with that length? There are plenty of other options that are gonna look great on you that can also be more than enough change for you. 
So we need to know what those boundaries are. Once you have an understanding of what those boundaries are, it's going to be a million times easier to work within those boundaries and ensure you get a haircut that you love. Okay, tip number four is understanding your hair texture. Hair texture plays a big role in what looks good, what functions, and at the end of the day, what you end up liking. For instance, if your hair texture is extremely fine and maybe thin, then maybe you wanna think about a shape that's a little bit more one length. Doesn't mean you can't have layers, and in fact, I think you should have layers, but not overly layered to the point where it's starting to thin your hair out too much or make it look thinner than it may even be. Maybe if your hair is very thin, going shorter can help because many times taking that hair a little bit shorter will help it to look a little bit denser. Maybe if your hair is wavy or curly, moving towards a layered shape where you're actually breaking up some of that wave and some of that curl and giving it more life, taking bulk out of areas that need to lose some of that bulk so it doesn't get too triangular. Maybe if it's long and super thick and very straight, again, layering might be a great option. Having it too long could be a problem. Maybe having some length and layering it could be a good option for you. But understanding what your texture is, is gonna play a role in you choosing a shape that makes sense for that texture. Once we figure that out, it's gonna make it a million times easier to choose a haircut that works with that texture to maybe alleviate some of the problems you're having or accentuate things that you love about your texture. Okay, tip five is all about maintenance. We have to understand what amount of maintenance we're willing to put into it. What are you willing to do? Not just on a day-to-day -day basis. We're not even talking about styling here. We're talking about maintaining the haircut. How often are you willing to go in to get your haircut? You might find that while shorter hair may actually be less maintenance for you on a day-to-day -day basis, it may mean a lot more visits to the salon. Maybe you had longer hair and you were only trimming it once every few months. But now that your hair is short to keep that shape in style, all of a sudden now you're finding you've got to go in every four to six weeks. Are you willing to put that time? Are you willing to invest that money into keeping your haircut looking the way you want it to look? It's not to say that you shouldn't go short or that you should have long or vice versa. It's to say that we need to understand that there is a difference and that maintenance is going to play a role in what you decide, or at least it should play a role in what you decide. So understanding what you're willing to put in, think about it. How often are you willing to get your hair cut? How much time are you willing to spend on your hair in the morning? Do you want to spend less time? And side note, a lot of people feel like shorter hair is going to be a lot less maintenance. And in some ways it can be. At the end of the day, there are situations where shorter hair actually may require you more time in the morning than your longer hair does. Just remember, longer hair, you may be able to pull your hair back and maybe that's all you wanted to do for the day and you're done. You're ready to go conquer the day. But then all of a sudden, shorter hair, you realize that, that you don't have the opportunity to just throw your hair back. You have to spend that time touching it up or styling it. So there is that to think about. Day-to-day -day maintenance and the maintenance to keep the style up are a big part of picking the right haircut for you. Okay, moving into face shape. If you're trying to figure out what is your face shape and you're having a hard time determining it, which a lot of us do, I want you to look at this video right here. This video is gonna help you understand what your face shape is so that you can determine moving forward what haircut or what shape or what length or if bangs would work well, et cetera, et cetera, is gonna function well for you. So go ahead right now and make sure you watch this. And again, if you wanna join me in the webinar I'm hosting, make sure you click on the link below so that you can get registered so that I can make sure to let you know as soon as it comes out. I'm telling you, I cannot wait to share this insight with you guys. It's gonna be kinda of awesome. Oh, and by the way, if you haven't subscribed yet, right there, go ahead and do that. Okay, well, I appreciate you hanging out. We'll see you in the next video. Bye.